Retirement. Yeah, yeah, we know no one wants to think about it, let alone get down to some tedious planning with respect to numbers for it. But hey, guys, I say that there are only three things that are certain in the world. Death, taxes and growing old. You can't take away the third one. And remember that India is not really a country where we enjoy state-sponsored social security. So, since you are going to be pretty much on your own in your older years and you will need a decent amount of money to manage the kind of lifestyle that you have today, to live the life that you want, it is a good idea to get started quickly. The earlier the better. And that is exactly what we will focus on the show today. Talk about how much money you need to save up, uh, what are the best ways of saving it up, and then how to make sure that it lives you or lives with you through your entire lifespan once you've uh, actually hit the age of retirement. And joining me to answer these three very important questions is Firoz Aziz of Anandrati Private Wealth. Firoz, always a pleasure to have you in the Thank studios. You, uh, this one is something that we don't want to really think about. But uh, the fact is that the numbers keep compounding and some of the formulas out there are, are pretty scary. I mean, I've seen estimates ranging from you should retire with, the, you know, uh, 8 crores, to 10 crores, to 12 crores. So you're always wondering whether this is a little overblown or whether there is truth to these numbers. So let's get started. Uh, what is the first thing you tell your clients when they come to you to talk about retirement planning? Firstly, not too many people proactively come to talk about <laughs> retirement planning. So that's a subject which mm -hmm. requires an external catalyst mm -hmm. uh, to start thinking like you're doing here, mm -hmm. right? Viewers need to be yeah. pushed to think of it. Point two, when they come to you, uh, you would rather you would tell them that you have to be keeping inflation in mind. Mm. Inflation is a silent killer. So it has actually destroyed 98% of the value in the last 30 years. So mm. if you need it, if you needed uh, two rupees, now you need 100 rupees, yeah. okay, or more to buy the same commodity in the last 30 years. So inflation cannot be ignored for long-term goals. Third is retirement will require a huge attention because there are nothing called retirement loans. Mm -hmm. You get an education loan, you get every loan, yeah. but there's nothing called retirement loan. Sure. So we make sure that the person is conscious about inflation, mm -hmm. also is conscious about placing a lot of emphasis and his allocation of the disposable income mm -hmm. into a retirement corpus. Okay, fair enough. Um, so the question is, first of all, defining this corpus, how much do you actually need? Um, you know, some of the simple formulas that one looks at uh, simply go on adding the inflation factor to your expenses as of today. So if I were to add inflation and look at the same expenses, let's say 20, 30 years down the line, uh, then where would I be or how much would I need? How, how do you go about working the numbers? Great. So mm -hmm. one assumption, like you mm -hmm. said, is if I have to retain my lifestyle, mm -hmm. okay, and forget about lifestyle upgrades, which mm -hmm. most humans actually upgrade their lifestyles. So let's assume that upgradation of lifestyle is aside. If I have an expense today of a one lakh rupee a month, so I'll have to first see how far away from retirement am I. Mm -hmm. So one variable is what is my current expense. Sure. The second variable is how far from retirement am I as mm -hmm. an individual. The third is what is the rate of inflation you can envisage mm -hmm. for the next 25 years, of course, or 20 years, mm -hmm. depending on how long you have uh, to work. Mm -hmm. So that's a very tough one. But you can definitely take a cue from the last 20 years history and mm -hmm. derive at a stable number of 7 mm -hmm. to 8 percent kind of an inflation number. Right. Of course, there could be in pockets of 25 years something like hyperinflation or inflation can uh, go lower as well. Mm -hmm. So three variables. How much do you spend today? How much time do you have? and what's the inflation rate. Okay. If you have these three variables clearly written down, a simple Excel sheet, Microsoft mm. Excel sheet, can help you envisage or calculate what is the value you will need per annum mm. to retain the same lifestyle. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I did what Feroz is asking us to do right now. I went into that simple calculator uh, and here's the example. Let's pull up the numbers for our viewers as well. Now, assume that your monthly expense today is 1 lakh rupees, which is not unthinkable. I mean, a city like Mumbai and Delhi with rent and all the other expenses involved. That means today, annually, you your expenditure is about 12 lakhs. Now, Firoz, as you said, uh, take at least 7 to 8% inflation. So, I assumed 8% inflation. And you let that compound. Uh, the annual expense that today is 12 lakhs. In 25 years of time, by the time, let's say, a 35-year-old touches 60, that annual expense is going to be 82 lakhs. That itself kind of blew away my, my, my mind. And then if I s do a simple multiplication, I'm at, let's say I'm 60, uh, my annual expense is 82 lakhs, multiplied by 20, assuming that I'm going to live till 80, 16 crores 
I mean, tell me there's something wrong with the maths. Tell me this is not the kind of money that we need. Or, or does it sound correct to you? No, it is correct. Uh, <laughs> you will get to 82 lakh of a requirement mm -hmm. uh, in the next 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it is mind-boggling to mm -hmm. say my 12 lakh rupee per annum expense mm -hmm. would shoot up to 82 lakh rupees mm -hmm. in the next 25 years. Mm -hmm. But if you go back in time and try and see whether it's happened or not, today you said 1 lakh rupee. 25 years back, the same household would mm. be easily managing at 15, 17,000 rupees, mm. right? Which is exactly the same multiple, yeah. right? Yeah, You're yeah. seven times in 25 years, mm -hmm. your expense will go up at least six, seven times mm. uh, in the next 25 years. Seems very difficult to comprehend at this stage, but so was it very difficult for us to compre comprehend 25 years back when you were spending 15, mm. that there would be a day I would be spending a lakh. I'm super, I'm super stressed, folks, already because, we, I mean, we're talking about uh, someone in their mid-30s, uh, basically 30 to 35, needing uh, at least 15 to 16 crores in your bank to live the same kind of life that you're living today up till the age of 80. Now, clearly, I don't have immediately access to 16 crores. So, Firoz, let's get down to the second question then. Um, how do you start investing for retirement? While all of us have scattered mutual funds and we're doing ELSS and, you know, there's some saving, some long-term, some medium-term, short-term, uh, dedicated retirement planning and retirement savings, how do we even begin? See, uh, before we go to the next topic, there's one good news mm -hmm. to that 16 crore number. Mm -hmm. Just like inflation compounds, mm -hmm. your return also compounds. So at the end of 60 years, you will still need only 4 crores, mm -hmm. not in the entire 16, because you're going to use that money mm -hmm. over a period of 20 years. Okay, brilliant. So that's where the power of equities is going to come in. Correct. Okay, suddenly I can breathe easy. That's, that, <laughs> that makes life far more sort of, you know, uh, far, far better, may I say. Yes. Absolutely. So how does one go about once they know that this is the kind of money mm -hmm. I will need, mm -hmm. then you will have to work backwards and say, what is the monthly investment I will need to do? Mm -hmm. Unless your investments are going to grow greater than 8%, mm -hmm. you will need the entire corpus accumulated from your salaries. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. if, your, if your inflation is 8 and your growth rate of your retirement corpus is 8, mm -hmm. then you will have to put all the 4 crores from your own salary. Unless your portfolio is compounding at 13, 14 percent, mm -hmm. then you know your portfolio is overtaking inflation and sure. making a burden lesser on my actual income, which is coming from daily life today. Okay, so basically the sense that I get is that in order to secure yourself, there's definitely a big equity chunk that needs to come in. The question is, how do you do this? We're going to take a break and now this conversation gets very, very interesting because we are going to talk about retirement plans. You have heard a lot about them. You've seen the advertisements. Should you be looking at retirement plans or are your plain vanilla mutual funds just good enough to do the job for you? Don't take this lightly because what we've just established with Feroz is that if you are in your mid-30s, right, now, you need to make sure that by the time you hit 60, you have at least four to five crores in your bank account, if not more, to ensure that you live a good lifestyle up till the age of 80. So, Feroz, um, it is a tall order, but, you know, there are products in the market. Uh, before we talk about mutual funds, I mean, I also want to sort of um, understand the concept of retirement plans because you, you see the glossy ads all around and then you wonder, oh, okay, I've not invested. Am I missing out on something? Am I doing something wrong? Uh, just your thoughts to some of these products and whether in addition to the EPFO, in addition to the NPS, whether this is also something that should be in my basket. See, uh, it should be in your basket from understanding perspective. Okay. Every product needs ha, might have some merits. Now, whether the merits overweigh the demerits is the primary question. So, annuities and pension plans are either from the insurance fold mm -hmm. or from something which is government-backed or can be something which is a mutual fund. So these are the broad categories in which I can plan my retirement. Mm -hmm. When it comes to insurance platforms, there are specific dedicated pension plans mm -hmm. available with most insurers, mm -hmm. which relative to the rest of them are at a lower cost. Okay. Setup costs are lower. Of course, uh, from a ULIP uh, pension plan, uh, a normal insurance, pure insurance plan, which is focused not on retirement, will have a significantly more cost, almost twice as thrice. Okay. So pension plans are lower on cost. Pension or retirement? I mean, Reti we're talking yeah. about the same product same. essentially. Absolute. Right. Right. Sorry, right. they are synonyms yeah. uh, in the nomenclature. Mm -hmm. Retirement plans mm -hmm. have a lower cost. Mm -hmm. Retirement plans are several, mm -hmm. uh, which can be categorized as two. Okay. One where I 
continuously fund it mm -hmm. and then wait for a period and then it funds me back. Right. 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 Uh, that's an annuity. Mm -hmm. There is a, that's an annuity which I accumulate the money and sure. then wait for a period and uh, st that starts reciprocating and gives mm -hmm. me back an annuity in the future. So th these are the deferred annuity retirement plans? These okay. are called the right? deferred annuity yeah. retirement yeah. plans. Okay. The other is if I have already reached a stage of retirement and I've accumulated my coppice mm -hmm. from elsewhere yes. and now I want some discipline mm -hmm. and consistency in payouts just mm -hmm. like I used to get a salary, mm -hmm. then you have an immediate annuity plan sure. where sure. I put the money and I expect from the subsequent month a specific mm -hmm. predetermined pension which gets credited to my bank account. These okay. are the two broad heads okay. under which these products uh, operate. Okay, fair enough. So now let's talk about the accumulation stage because we are still talking about a working individual who is building that retirement corpus. And the question is mutual fund or uh, uh, you know a dedicated retirement slash pension product or a mix of both. So now help us understand these retirement plans. Uh, even if I talk about let's say a ULIP oriented plan which invests primarily in the equity market. Um, uh, what are the merits and demerits? What are the cost structures? What kind of return? How will I make at the end of 20, 30 years? See, one is, of course, return. Mm -hmm. Then comes risk. Mm -hmm. Then comes taxation. These are the three prime important things to evaluate and have tick marks against all of them before you invest in any product for mm -hmm. that matter. Return, uh, pre-cost, is to make sure that you're comparing different product classes. Yeah. Pre-cost is the best judgment sure. of return. Okay, so, so that's pre-taxes or... Pre-tax, no, pre-tax, pre pre-cost. And pre-cost. Okay. Correct? Okay. Then comes those funds which invest in these categories also. You have equity investments and debt investments. Right. So both the assets, financial assets, you can participate using a pension plan. Mm -hmm. Equity portfolios need to be compared with equity portfolios of mutual funds to Absolutely. do an apple and apple comparison. Absolutely. If I do that and mm -hmm. if I look at the top five insurers mm -hmm. and top five mutual funds, mm -hmm. the mutual fund companies have beaten the equity portion of the insurance companies by about 2.8%. 2.8% in terms of the return that they're generating? Per annum. Per annum, 2.8%. Right. That could be quite significant because this is money that's going to compound for, you know, 20, 25 years. And in every year, if mutual funds are generating 25 to 3% more than equivalent ULIPs, then that's a big gap, wouldn't you say? And this analysis is a very unbiased analysis. Okay. I take all the equity assets the top five fund houses manage mm -hmm. and all the equity assets top five insurers manage. So, so this is backdated sort of data yeah, testing that you've already For the had. last 10 years. Okay, wow. That's a long period and 2.7% over 10 year, mm -hmm. 10 year periods mm -hmm. is a very large compounded number, mm -hmm. right? It almost becomes the equal to your corpus mm. itself, which you begin with. Mm. So in return, uh, the retirement plans don't score. Risk, I would still give it to them uh, because they are 10% lower risk uh, than, a, than an equity counterpart on the mutual fund platform. Okay. Okay, and risk is also measurable. So you use something called standard deviation to measure risk, mm -hmm. uh, not getting into the technical bit, mm -hmm. but risk is 90% on insurance and 100% on mutual funds. So there's a 10% extra risk which a mutual fund equity fund has taken to mm. generate that 2.8%. Okay, this is really interesting because I thought contribution to pension plans at least, that falls under your section ATC. So that's supposed to be tax exempt. So at what stage does the taxation kick in? Great, you get a tax discount when you invest. Right. Okay, of a lakh and a half per annum. Correct. So if I am investing a lakh and a half per annum, that's mm -hmm. not my only source of tax discount, but this also provides a tax discount. Mm -hmm. But when you start getting the money, let's the assume... The annuity income when it kicks in. Kicks in. Okay. Uh, like the rest of the plans have mm -hmm. section, 80, uh, sec section 10D, mm -hmm. which makes the entire corpus tax-free. Mm -hmm. But when you take it as a recurring monthly income, mm -hmm. that is taken as your total income and even your capital which you infused becomes mm -hmm. taxable. Okay, this is very important and remember this because we will revisit this in the third part of our conversation. The fact that annuity income is taxable, it is treated as any other income. So it's going to have a bearing on deciding whether you want to go for annuities or a systematic withdrawal plan in a mutual fund. But we will get back to this conversation in just a moment. Right now, still talking accumulation. So let's put some numbers to this, Feroz, as well. Uh, if you could give an example, I mean, if I, let's say I'm investing a certain amount in an equity ULIP, 
vis-a-vis -vis in a mutual fund, how will the numbers look at the end of you know, 20, 30 years? So if I take an example of a lakh rupee uh, annual investment mm -hmm. uh, for 15 lakh period, uh, 15 years of uh, uh, period, mm -hmm. so you have invested 1 lakh for 15 years, so you've accumulated 15 lakhs of your capital. If it's grown at a historical rate which has been analyzed, 8% uh, pre-expense, 6% post-expense, mm -hmm. at the end of 15 years, you will have 23 lakh 98,000 rupees, 128 rupees. 20, uh, 23 lakhs 98, 128 uh, for your 15 lakh invested at, at the rate of 6%. And then if you gave a 20 year period for a break and then start accumulating money at the end of 25 years, you will be left with 43 odd lakhs. Okay. So your uh, 15 lakh rupee became 43 lakh rupee in uh, a pension plan. Assuming a, a return of around 6%. That 6%. is net of expenses return. Correct. And okay. that I think okay. uh, has some semblance to what the past had to offer. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, when you did a mutual fund past analysis, mm -hmm. if I invested 1 lakh rupee for the first 15 years mm -hmm. and then the corpus and I checked the corpus out of curiosity at the end of 15 years, I would have had 51 lakhs which supersedes the value of 25 lakh period 25 year period on oh, the insurance so side. you would have already made more on your mutual fund in the investing years itself than as opposed to the entire uh, the entire period in a ulip yeah very well actually yeah, yeah. articulated mm -hmm. and lastly the 15 year period if i compare the same periods and wait for the next 10 years in the mutual fund i'll be almost left with a 1.8 crore corpus at a 14% rate, uh, this 14% rate has been checked whether the last 20, 25 years have had this so on us. I was just going to play devil's advocate. So basically what, I mean to simplify this, what the math is throwing up as per Feroz is that if you're investing 1 lakh rupees every year, uh, by the time you retire at 60, assuming a 6% return, a uh, net of expenses return on a ULIP, you will be somewhere, you know, left with around 42, 43 lakh rupees in hand when you're 60 years old, whereas you'd be left with 1.8 crore rupees in the case of a mutual fund, right? Okay. The 14% return, I mean, is that a little aggressive to to assume a near mid-teen returns on mutual funds, Firoz? See, I think uh, no, mm -hmm. because uh, see, when you're looking at equity with clear transparency, and I think 20, 25 years, debt has no role to play in retirement, to mm -hmm. my mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, retirement, uh, debt has more to play with the lower, uh, lower, longer, shorter period goals. So longer period goals should be only equity. Equity, if our country is going to grow at 8%, uh, if you add back inflation of 5-7%, uh, 13, 14% on the large indices over long mm -hmm. periods is very much possible. Then you have professional management, then adding the 2-3% extra, mm -hmm. uh, okay. which of course, there's going to be long-term capital gains now mm -hmm. which needs to be factored in so if I say 14% then I actually mean more than 14% uh, 15 15 and half so that so 14 is it doable in the next 10 15 years the answer is yes has it been more in the last uh, 20 years it has been more but you can't extrapolate just the future so you're taking mm -hmm. something which is moderate not those 17 18 mm. percent returns which mm. equities have actually delivered I'm feeling so much better after after this conversation because I know that there is a possibility of at least creating the two three crores uh, of corpus but let's get back to the figure you said that you know uh, you know person who's in their 30s right now needs to retire at least with four to five crores in order to manage retirement um, uh, sort of uh, lifestyle. So uh, give us a mix now as we are you know, rounding up this side of the conversation between let's say mutual funds, maybe an NPS, uh, EPF, whatever money is already accumulating there. And I don't know if at all you want to throw in a pension plan. What is the ideal retirement mix that you would advise in terms of investment? So I would use uh, mutual funds and NPS. Okay. In, uh, if, I am, if I'm in the accumulating phase, NPS is a very good idea. Okay, and I think their uh, the flexibility is becoming higher as time progresses. So NPS good for uh, accumulation phase. Why, why do you like the NPS and why would you club it along with the mutual funds? So I love the NPS because it's the same fund manager at 100 the cost wow. and uh, it's cumbersome of course mm. but I think that 1%, 1.5% saving can actually act as equal to your corpus in the next yeah. 20 years. Options for uh, building a retirement corpus as well as uh, looking at the best ways of withdrawing that money and getting steady income once you turn 60. Now Feroz, that is the other interesting aspect because here is when uh, the question comes up, should you buy an annuity? As you said, you can buy an annuity, give the insurance company that lump sum payment and then you'll get monthly income or should you put that money in a mutual fund and do a systematic withdrawal plan? So help us out here. 
Uh, see, I think uh, if you're buying, planning to buy an annuity, mm -hmm. the first question is, what tax lab are you likely to be and what are you currently in? Mm -hmm. Okay, because uh, annuity is a one-way street. You can't reverse the decision. So when you're I can get into a mutual fund, set up a SWP, six months later I can buy an annuity. Mm -hmm. But I can't do that vice versa, right? right? I can't buy an annuity and change. So point one I'm making is you have to be very clear when you're buying an annuity that you will be in the lowest tax bracket. Okay. If you're not, then annuity is certainly not, a, not even a choice. Mm. Because in a systematic withdrawal plan, the taxation is only to the extent of the return on your capital. Sure. So if you've put a crore, for example, which mm. is your retirement corpus, mm. you are expected to make 7 lakhs to 8 lakhs a year in a debt fund. Right. So the tax is only on the 7, 8 lakhs. Right. But if I put this crore on a pension fund mm -hmm. and then take the corpus, the entire pension is taxable. The whole one crore that I'm putting in my pension corpus. When it comes back to me in parts, right. all of it is taxable. Yes, that's correct. Right. Yes. So it will not come back to me on, on a particular right. day, but it's right. coming in chunks. It is not just the differential between mm. my capital and my payout, mm. which is getting taxed, but the entire pension is sure. being taxed. Sure. So if you... Point one I'm trying to drive home is it's not it's a one-way street. Right. So be very careful. Right. If you are in the lowest tax bracket and it's likely that you will remain there, mm -hmm. then an annuity still brings in immense discipline. Mm. Mutual funds don't bring in discipline and right. human beings are not disciplined inherently. True. So it, I would need an external compulsion mm. uh, to not take back my money in lump sum. Mm -hmm. So that's one big yeah, advantage yeah. of an annuity. Mm -hmm. uh, third is when you're doing a systematic withdrawal plan, you can move depending on the macroeconomic situations very well. Mm -hmm. But annuities don't provide you that mm -hmm. kind of flexibility to move between equity and debt. I totally get that. So the point on taxation is well taken. It's very important. And the point on flexibility, the fact that it's, it's money gone, it's given. You cannot you know, retrieve it or get it back. Uh, now let's just talk about once again return and numbers. So if I'm going to park, you know, whatever example you take, one crore, two crore, three crores, whatever I'm parking my retirement corpus in an annuity plan vis-a-vis uh, -vis in a you know, mutual fund systematic withdrawal plan, uh, what are the chances or where are the chances of the money lasting me longer and ensuring it covers me through my life? Uh, if you're just going to buy yourself pl plain debt in mutual funds, mm. then it'll almost last you equal on a okay. pre-tax basis. Okay. So what I would do is I'll take my annuity, break it into two parts. Mm. One is which will survive, which I, which will survive at least seven, eight years. Mm. So I'll break my retirement corpus into two portions. One, let's assume I have a crore. I will put 50 lakhs in equity, assuming that this 50 lakhs can take care of me for the next six, seven years. Okay. So that this 50 lakhs, which has been kept aside as part two, mm. which will be after I finish my first corpus mm -hmm. uh, is grown significantly more okay. uh, and last 10 years rather than 7 years. Okay. okay. So basically both the chunks you will put in equity uh, in, in equity or will it be one in equity and one in debt? One will be in debt. Okay. The one which I'm going to consume in the next 6-7 years yeah. is has to be in debt right. uh, in specific kind of debt funds which can lock me 7-8% interest mm -hmm. and then I'm taking a systematic withdrawal plan and, and actually eating away into the first component. Sure. And the second component is running faster for me mm -hmm. and trying to create value mm -hmm. rather than just protect me and 7-8 years I don't think uh, equity will not overtake debt and give you better return. So your okay. uh, your retirement corpus, half of it is more working mm -hmm. far more powerfully than the other half. Mm -hmm. So the first half is stable, giving me money on a monthly basis. The second half is working to make yeah. sure that it sustains me 10, 12 years rather than okay. just the seven years. Very helpful advice, Feroz. Any final thoughts that you'd like to leave viewers with? Maybe, I mean, names, if there are retirees watching the show right now and if they want to follow the advice that you've given in terms of parking their retirement money in certain debt funds and equity funds, maybe some names and any final tips? See, I think it's important to summarize because we've mm -hmm. spoken a lot. Yes. So keep inflation in mind. Calculate how much will you need is the second uh, takeaway you should remember. The third is uh, there are three, several types of retirement plans. Even if you've skipped the insurance-based retirement plans, you haven't missed much. Use NPS and mutual funds is the next thing. And then make sure that you have two different portions of your retirement corpus if you're retiring, retiring now. Mm -hmm. And don't make it one lump, one, one big one chunk. One big pool, yeah. Big. And funds, of course, uh, uh, let me give you a couple of equity mm -hmm. funds for the second portion, mm -hmm. uh, which will not be touched for seven years. Right. Uh, take three funds, not just two. Uh, you can look at Mirai Asset India Equity Fund. You can look at Kotak Standard Multicap and HDFC Small Cap for half the corpus. And for the debt funds, you mm -hmm. have to only choose accrual funds, Franklin Templeton Short Term Income Fund and ICICI Regular Savings Fund. If you did these two debt funds and started a systematic withdrawal plan, this five fund portfolio, uh, one part and the second part, will mm -hmm. last you at least three, four, five years more uh, than not having it this way. 
All right, Feroz, this has been very helpful and I'm sure all those who are watching also will realize that there is more to life than fixed deposits. Even after you turn 60, there are ways to make your money work much smarter that you manage your lifestyle. Thank you very much for being with us on the show.